Hey math students, today it's time to graph y equals the sine of x. So, first off, x. We've been using, with our unit circle here, we've been using theta as the, uh, uh, the um, angle. And then we've been using the x-coordinate here to, to signify the cosine and the y-coordinate here to signify the sine, right? We all know that. Whether it hits the, world, the, the unit circle, uh, your x-coordinate is the cosine, your y-coordinate is the sine. Okay, what we're doing today is we're graphing y equals the sine of x. <clears throat> so what that means is this time x is the angle, okay? Uh, and you may be thinking, well, that's kind of weird. Well, just, you know, kind of hang with it. Uh, so x is going to denote our angle, and y is going to be the sine of that angle. So I guess the first thing I want to do is what I frequently do when I'm graphing something, and that is make a table. Okay, let's, let's find out what values uh, we have so that I'll know what, what points to plot. So when x, when my angle is 0, well, the sine of 0 is... 0, okay? When my angle is pi over 6, that's right here, my sine is 1 half, I'm going to write 0.5. When my angle is uh, pi over 3, well, pi over 4, uh, then my, uh, my sine is uh, root 2 over 2, and that's approximately point. 707, okay? Let's call it 0.71. Pi over 3, that's right here, that's 60 degrees. Uh, the sine of that is root 3 over 2, which is approximately 1 point, uh, no, I'm sorry, which is approximately 0.87. And then pi over 2 is going straight up. The sine of that is 1. All right, so that's what we have so far. And then 2 pi over 3, well, that's going to be over here. Well, the sine of 2 pi over 3 is the same as the sine of pi over 3, which is 0.87. And the sine of 3 pi over 4 is the same as the sine of pi over 4, so that's 0.71. And again, it's going to be 0.5, and again, it's going to be 0 for pi when we get down here. So you can see as x goes from 0 to pi, the sine of x goes up to 1 and then back down to 0. Well, that makes perfect sense. As this angle is going from 0 to pi, the y-coordinate of the unit circle goes from 0 up to 1, down to 0 again. Well, let's go ahead and, and uh, plot that over here. Um, so I'm starting at 0, and yeah, let's do this, uh, let's do this in green. I'm starting at 0, and this is pi over 6. Pi over 6, I'm going to be at 1 half. And at pi over, at 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, I'm going to be at 1, which is right there. And this is sort of right in the middle there. And this is 1 half, and this is sort of in the middle there. So what's happening is we're going up like this, and then down again when we get to pi. Now, what happens between pi and 2 pi? Well, what happens between pi and 2 pi is the exact same thing, only negative, right? Okay, so that means this is going to be at 3 pi over 2. This is going to be down at negative 1. And at uh, 7 pi over 6, it'll be at negative 0.5. And so it's going to look a little bit like this. Okay, so you get this wavy thing going like that. Now, what about if we did negative angles? Well, you can see what's happening. The negative angle here is going to be the same thing that we did when we did over here, right? When we did from pi to 2 pi. So that's just going to be that. And if we keep on with our negative angle and do this section here, that's going to be exactly the same as what we had right there. So this is going to go like this. And what you see is that it just becomes repetitive. 
Okay, and here is our y-axis right here. Okay? It becomes this repetitive pattern that repeats over and over and over and over, and this is called a periodic function. Okay? This one is y equals the sine of x. A periodic function. A periodic function is a function that does something and then it does it again and again and again and again and again and again. And now remember, we established before that there's no such thing as the smallest angle and there's no such thing as the largest angle, which means this is just going to keep on going in that pattern forever. And so our range, I'm sorry, our domain is going to be uh, x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range, however, well, we get down to negative one and we get up to positive one, but we don't get any higher than positive one or any lower than negative one. So our range is going to be y goes from negative one to positive one. Now, there's two more things that I want you to uh, know about, and that is called, one of them is called the amplitude. and the period, okay? The amplitude of my graph is kind of like, it's kind of like the height. So you start from the midline, and in this case, the midline is just the x-axis. You start from the midline here and you say, from that midline, how high up do I go? Well, in this case, I'm going up to, well, I'm going up a distance of one. It's gonna be the same as the midline down to the minimum. So whatever this value is will be the same as this value here. And in this particular case, the value is 1. Oh, I'm sorry, put on the wrong thing. That's the amplitude. Okay. Now the period. The period is the length, the shortest length that you can find of one cycle that, uh, that it goes through. Okay, remember I said in a periodic function, it does something and then it repeats that thing over and over and over. Well, a period is the length of that thing that it does. So I would say from here to here is one period. So in other words, that's from zero to two pi, two pi. Or I could also say I'm going from here to here. That's one period, that's one cycle. That's going from negative pi to pi, it's still two pi. Or I could even say, I'm gonna go from max to max or from min to min. And it doesn't matter how I measure this, the period is always going to be 2 pi. Okay? So a sine function has this wave. It goes through the origin. It goes through the origin, headed up. And it has this wave, and, uh, uh, and it repeats itself over and over and over because it is a periodic function. The amplitude of a sine wave is 1, and the period of y equals sine of x is 2 pi. Now, let's look at cosine. Okay, now we're going to do y equals the cosine of x. All right. Well, let's see. When, uh, when x is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. And when x is pi over 6, the cosine is... Uh, root 3 over 2, which is approximately 0.87, remember? And when it's pi over 4, the cosine is root 2 over 2, which is approximately 0.71, if you remember. And when it's pi over 3, the cosine is 0.5. And when it's pi over 2, the cosine is 0. Okay, I'm just going along here, and I'm checking out the x coordinates because the x-coordinate tells me what the cosine is. However, here x is the angle and the cosine of x is the cosine of that angle. Okay? So now, uh, what happens in quadrant 2? Well, in quadrant 2, we have the same numbers, but they're going to be negative. So this is going to be negative 0.5 and negative 0.71 and negative 0.87 and negative 1. So let's plot those points and see what it looks like. And let's do the cosine in blue. All right, so we're going to start with the y-intercept, which is 0, 1. 
And when it's pi over 6, we're at 0.87, so we go down a little bit. And when we're at pi over 3, uh, uh, yeah, pi over 3, we're at 1 half, so we're right there. And when we're at pi over 2, we're at 0. Uh, 2 pi over 3, we're at negative 1 half. And then to 1, okay? Now, then what happens? We've come along to here, and then the cosine goes from negative 1 back up to 1 following that exact same pattern. So this first off went like this, and then it's going to go back up like this. And to go from 0 to negative pi, I'm going from 1 to negative 1. So this is going to go like this. Oops, undershot that. And then like this. So what you see is it's exactly the same shape as the sine. What's the difference? The difference is you've basically taken the sine and scooted it over to the left pi over two units. And if you're clever, you'll say, huh, that means the cosine of x must be the sine of x plus pi over 2. You're right. It definitely is. Um, but uh, I don't really want to focus on that right now, but there's a lot of uh, aspects of sines and cosines that you can get from, this, uh, uh, from these graphs. But what I do want to point out is that for y equals the cosine of x, let me label that here, y equals cosine of x. For y equals the cosine of x, the domain is still all real numbers. The range is still from, z from negative 1 to positive 1. The, uh, uh, the amplitude of a cosine graph is still 1. The period of a cosine graph is still, I can go from max to max, that's 0 to 2 pi. It's still 2 pi. There's a lot in common between these two graphs. Now, one last thing that I want to point out, and that is cosine graph. It has some nice symmetry, doesn't it? Okay, Cuts right in the middle here. It does the exact same thing on the left side and the right side of the graph. What type of function does that? Oh, yeah, an even function. Yeah, well, we found that out earlier when we were looking at the unit circle that uh, the cosine of negative x is the same thing as the cosine of x. That means this is an even function. And what do we notice about the sine of x? Well, y equals the sine of x. I could spin it around like this, and it would look exactly the same. And that means this is an odd function. Okay? All right. In the next video, we're going to start messing with these graphs. We're going to start transforming them, stretching them, compressing them this way, stretching them this way, moving them up and down. Uh, it's going to be wild. All right? See you then.